corporate here. Uh, so you can set up a business here and later expand to Saudi Arabia. Uh, I remember uh, going to one of the meetings uh, in Astrolab GLT in 2016 when Ethereum was around $25, I believe. And I remember one guy biting his nails. Uh, he, was, he was fearing that Bitcoin would go below 1000 So yeah, uh, it's a great place to meet tech and uh, marketers. So let me just open here. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to present the, uh, the emerging technology in the Web3 world, DAO. I'm going to talk about Aragon, what we are about, and, and what is Aragon manif Manifesto. My colleague, Anthony, is going to talk about the initiatives Aragon is taking. And Jalaj is going to talk more about how we coordinate in the Discord group. So, and after that, we're going to have a Q&S session after that. And, uh, and then you could socialize there. So I'm going to start today's session with a question. What is a community? Community can be a group of people with, with common interest, trying to achieve common goals. So this room is a community of people who would love to know more about tech and our emerging tech. So this is something called complexity profile. Uh, complexity profile basically shows how much impact a human group can have uh, if you change the dynamics and structure of an organization. For example, uh, if we change a group of people who are carpenters to scientists, CEOs, or physicists, the second group would have much more impact economically, you know, politically or environmentally than, than the former group. So it shows uh, how much impact a group has. So going back to 10,000 years, we were first initially hunter-gatherers, and our main goal was survival. We had to survive. There were small groups of people. It was almost flat organization. We had to coordinate to get through the day. Then has uh, around 10,000 years, uh, we invented agriculture. We settled down and as community grew, we started specializing in different trades. It is like can be masons, carpentry, etc. So that structure B, assume it's a uh, Egyptian civilization. Now, if there were a war between the hunters and 100 people of hunters, 100 Egyptian groups, the more likely that the Egyptian empire would overtake the group of hunters. The reason being the, the Egyptian empire is more specialized in the skill set. That is why they have more impact. And this C individual basically shows how much impact collectively they can have uh, in, uh, outside. So moving in the uh, group C, uh, you see industrial revolution. During industrial revolution, the machineries made so much impact that we could move faster, produce faster, and information you know, flowed, flowed faster. During that time, like around 18th century, there were a lot of monarchies that fell. And the, the reason being that monarchy was formed because to manage the community and uh, the power was concentrated in the hands of few. But as the empire grew, a person can take only so much information and make a change to that information. So, so hierarchy structure, pure hierarchical structure like monarchy was inefficient to the growing changing world. So different forms of governance like democracy and republic eventually replaced the monarchy. Then moving to hybrid, that's the D, that's information age. And uh, there's a saying that change is only constant. Information just comes in you know, at, at warp speed. And during that time, the, those organizations who are agile, and can move around and, and see the trends in the market, 
pivot, they are more likely to survive as opposed to those who are in the traditional uh, rigid bureaucratic structure. So one thing that baffles me is that for 6,000 years, we invented writing numbers. Past 200 years, we made a massive improvement in, uh, in science and technology. We have sent people to space. We, have sent, we can send people 1,000 meters below the sea level in 1,000 bar of sea pressure, which can crush your bones. Mind you, submarine is the most, one of the most complex machine. It takes 20 years to make one. And we may also achieve a mortality where a person can live for 200 years. But one thing that baffles me is the way we manage ourselves as a group has almost remained the same. Top down pyramid structure where the orders went down, information up. So is there a better way to organize ourselves? How can we get to E? network civilization, which can unleash the potential of a group and correct the inefficiencies of the hierarchical system. Is there any emerging technologies like blockchain that could help in coordination? Today's session will answer this, these questions. So let's go back to the community. And uh, this time the web 1.0 community um, who here remembers GeoCities, Angel Fire, Yahoo Group, um, <laughs> and MIRC, RIP, MSN Messenger? Yeah, those were those were the, the good days. Uh, and one of the Web 1.0 project, which I should notably mention, was eBay. eBay was one of the groups where the star has a forum, and it was one of the groups where you could exchange of goods between two strangers using a reputational system, the feedback system. eBay started uh, in a niche, niche communities, like collect, those who uh, collect, uh, what do you call, uh, toys or it can be uh, stamp collectors, any, everything dish. So they tapped into this niche sector and that's the reason the first few years, 80% of their sales came from this community group. So eBay knew the power of community. Web 1.0 was great for sharing information, but your mom or grandma didn't join it for a reason because of user interface, right? It was not easy. Some, some of them were not really easy to use. So that social aspect was not there. You know, there's a friction. That was the reason that prevented from mass adoption of the Web 2.0, which was corrected in Web 2.0. So starting 2006, you know, you see all the startups, Flickr, you see uh, F Facebook and all those companies take over. And they corrected the user interface at the same time, the mobile, you know, the, the prices went down. So a lot of people came in and started using it. It was a great, fantastic, Web 2.0 is very great for discussion, but is it good to execute those goals of a group? Let's find out with this example. By now you know that I'm an avid comic fan, you know. 20 years ago, when I was a teenage, we didn't have you know, money to buy every issue of Naruto, you know, Astro Boy, Superman, Batman, you know, one, one Piece. So it, we didn't have that money. So what we did is a bunch of friends got together. We decided to pool money and buy series. You know? So it's like a group sharing comic and manga uh, group. So, it, in theory, in theory it was, it looked very easy. These are the steps we decided. It was like rosy in, in the real world. I mean, in the ideal world. First, uh, what we did is that we first discussed on MSN Messenger. Then the Facebook group came, we moved there. We discussed whether we want the series of, uh, of Batman, Superman, not Invisible Man. Um, yeah, so we discussed that first. And then we, have, we went to forum. And we posted that this much, this one costs $100. Who's in? 
So people will post in, in, in. So you see that if you see that as uh, okay, if it's like for each person, if it's like less than seven, eight dollars, it's okay, let's go ahead. So in that moment, we again take a formal vote. Some people who said in were like, you know, sleeping on, we had to call them and basically ask them to vote again. And then we, among ourselves, we choose a group by leader whose role was to basically uh, find count the votes, find the list of who voted, and then send the details of payment details to them. So once he get the payment, he confirms the payment and then makes a white list of all the contributors. Uh, so only those people who contributed will get a share of the, the comic series. So once you get the money, if you're lucky, because sometimes there is a sale going on, we can grab it and then, and then we can share ourselves. That was, that was an ideal word, but in, uh, in real world, in real world, there are some, we have, we face many problems. So example, this, as I said, this manual process, it takes a lot of time. To, to basically call each one of them and then send, we, had, we were like started at 10, then it grew 50. So, so it was a lot of tedious manual job to make the white list to, to confirm the payment. And there was a lack of speed. So since it took time to collect the payment, so it, uh, a lot of, some people lost interest. For example, if 20 people pledge, it costed a hundred dollar project. $100 project is to cost $5 to each one of them. Five people bailed out. So the 15 people, then it cost $7. So the guy said, no, I don't want to pay $7. Then the whole project fell off, right? So then there was a trust and transparency issue. There was one time, one of the group buyer ran away with no money. <laughs> and uh, other time, and this is, the, this is the most annoying thing, is PayPal can block you. You know, they block you. They say, okay, there's suspicious uh, activity going on. We'll block your account for 30 days until we find out what's going on. So we go to those members and say, okay, PayPal block our account. They say, oh, you're phony, you know. So then we have to return, refund the money back. And uh, the main thing is disincentive for those group buying organizers. It's a lot of work. So many times we want to buy the series, but we look at each other, who's going to be the group by leader. So that's, that, so, so you understand that web 2.0 was very nice for discussing the, the groups, but trying to achieve the goal, it was a bit inefficient, which, so what, what can solve the problem? Enter web 3.0. 1.0 was good to share ideas. Web 2.0 is a social, so you can discuss those ideas in the groups. Well, Web 3.0 is internet of value. You can first time transfer value over internet. And that changes the whole dynamics. That is, you can complete or execute those goals. Um, so, how does Web 3.0 do that? Let's assume in this room group, we open a bank account, which is shared by everybody. And we put all, we all put money inside. It's transparent. You could see who put the money, when they put it, and it's audited. So there's a trust and transparency, right? And also we, we decide ourselves that if there is a vote going on, and if it reaches 70% consensus, automatically the money is released to the group buyer, right? It's not manually, you have to go there, uh, whitelist and all this thing, you know? So we make a program which does that. So this in essence, ladies and gentlemen, is what is a DAO. DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And where a community has a treasury, which is usually in a decentralized uh, infrastructure like blockchain, where the rules are encoded in computer code. At the same time, you can reduce your coordination costs by putting that in a code. 
For those who don't know blockchain, blockchain before blockchain, you could copy paste any digital entity, you know, 20 times, you know, and but after blockchain, you can create unique digital products of value. So that was that's what blockchain enables. Another features of DAO is that it, it, it increased the incentives. Since you took a, the third party out, like PayPal out, now there's less friction. You could send money anytime. So, so people can discuss how much can this role you know, pay for. So they pay, f- they, they pay for the person who does the work. What this creates is that it creates a, something called creator's economy, right? It attracts talent who will eventually do the work and, and, base, and get a share of the work at the same time, have a say in the organization, which you cannot do that in the Facebook and Twitter where you post your work and they monetize uh, your work through ads. So to the codes, you can reduce the, the task, which I told well, verifying the, the list, uh, whitelisting. The basically, it's basically this, codes are objective. They don't have any bias. They don't sleep. They work 24 seven. While most institutions human are run by human, humans are subjective. They can have, you know, tomorrow they can lock their account because you believe in something else. And, you know, this not run 24 seven. So that can make a huge difference in the level of trust. Self sovereign. You can protect your individuality. You can have different uh, people of different mentality and ideas can come together and work towards common goals. If you don't like it, for example, uh, one person is a DC and uh, they're going for Marvel. He does not like it. He could something called rage quit. He can withdraw the money anytime from Dow, which cannot do that in traditional world because usually it's it's with a single person. You know, he holds the money. He's like, I'll give him money tomorrow, tomorrow. And this creates antagonistic feeling and they do politics and all that behind the back. So, so DAO creates a more engaging environment. Trust. So all this incentive and transparency creates trust. Trust is a currency in business. Trust trumps time. If you trust something, you move faster. So this creates a really good engaging environment. And the most important thing is skin in the game. You enjoy your rewards, you have to pay for your sins. Has a distance between the ruler and the rule and decision makers and decision takers is, has increased over time. We have been seeing time and again, the decision makers not facing the consequences of the decisions. For example, CEOs usually take decisions which can be detrimental to the company, but they bail out, you know, they bail out, they have golden parachute, the rest all suffer the consequences. In DAO, you, when you put the money, you have the more voting power. At the same time, if it goes down, you suffer the consequences. This creates this organization which are much more responsible and long-term thinking. That is the most, one of the most important uh, DAO. So if you to go back to a comic group, if you go back, uh, have the whole group in the DAO, what would take us days can be done in hours with the help of computer code. That's the power of DAO. And in Aragon, Aragon makes a platform that manages and creates DAOs. It was started in 2017 by Louis and George. I don't want to pronounce the last name. <laughs> and uh, their, their main goal was the communities, cooperatives, clubs, all with the traditional hierarchical approach to move to, to flatter organizations, to become flat, engaged fast, agile, and they put their mission and vision in something called Aragon Manifesto, which we'll see towards the end, and you'll take the pledge. 
So before I end uh, my speech, I want to talk about a species. It's very fantastic. When it's, when it's single and alone, it's just, you know, it doesn't make much impact. But when they get together, they can move the world. Any guess? How do you know? <laughs> it's ants. It is ants. Uh, so ants can, com can make complex roots. There's no leader among them. They communicate to pheromones. And here you can see ants forming a wall. It's to, to basically protect their eggs against the harsh climate. They could make a bridge during the drought so they can access food. The forager party can go other side and get food. This is a really teamwork. And also they can make a boat raft. During the flood, they get together and form a raft. They can stay like this for two weeks. And when the flood subsides, they go back doing the work again. Now you must be wondering, why am I talking about ants suddenly? Well, most speeches end with, let's make the world a better place. Me being an avid nature lover, think that the nature is already perfect. Perfect where we can learn from. Like this ants who self-organize and organize themselves so they could get the maximum potential, which they can fight droughts, famine, and flood, why can't we do the same? Why can't we form the same structure and unleash our potential to solve complex problems we are facing? Complex problems like climate change, war, and poverty. So if you are a person, who loves organization which is democratic over autocratic, who loves organization which is collaborative over competitive, transparent over opaque, who loves companies that have long-term vision and short-term quarter-to-quarter vision, who rewards and incentivizes the employees, over quasi-slavery, it's time to join the fight. It's time to pledge, pledge to break and move away from the pyramid boring structure and join the emerging world of decentralized worlds and DAO and make our workplaces, communities, and institutions a better place. So join me in taking a pledge. Go to this website and the first 50 pledges would get this NFT. So just note down the link. So it's time for my colleague to present more about Aragon Expanded. Thank you. Just take Does everybody have the have it written down if you want it? That's where it'll be sent to. If you have any if you need any help with that. Lion will help you. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, guys, for coming here. It's ironic that he was discussing ants because our, our token is, is ant, um, not, not financial advice, obviously. But, um, you know, this is a great example of how DAOs work. So I didn't really organize this event, and I work for Aragon Association, Aragon Labs. This is done by the community. So the and DAO, our sub DAO, has come together, our ambassador and line as well have come together and, and organized this event. So this is just a, a small idea of how community can have a huge impact, right? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about growing the DAO pie because we are shifting in a way as an organization. <clears throat> there are two uh, 
things that we really focus on. One is our product, obviously, which uh, I'll talk about a little bit, but an interesting thing is that we will be launching a new product soon. And if you are going to create a DAO, please come speak to me after and we can talk about that. Now, the other thing is that we've done a lot of user research in the last year. And there's some really interesting things that we figured out in relation to DAOs and people creating DAOs. And so really, how are we going to grow what is the DAO pie? Now, what is the DAO pie? So thanks to Deep DAO and CoinGecko, we know that there's about $10 billion in total treasuries of DAOs right now. Fairly considerable amount. Token holders were 130,000 last year are now 1.8 million in just about a year. Over 4,800 DAOs, 1.2 billion in trading volume, and a total market cap of 20 billion. This has gone up 18 times in a year. That's how fast DAOs are growing. So in 2018, one could say is when DAOs started to pick up a little bit of steam, and it was really just a treasury with token, tokenized voting. Now we're starting to emerge into what we called collaborative token enabled communities. And there are three main pillars, the treasury, the community, and the coordination, which often is the most complex part. How do we organize all these people, community members towards a common goal, right? especially in a horizontal level. And to be honest, there are probably only 100 people that have created like a really, really, really successful DAO in terms of TVL, so ho holding a lot of money. And so those people are the ones that really are the DAO experts, to be honest. And we're fine with that because we're going to be growing with DAO creators. And so who contributes in building these DAOs? We have Web3 contributors. We have DAO products, such as ourselves. We have the DAO creators. Some of you in here are looking at creating a DAO. DAO services, which is really important. Those are the tools and services that help a DAO grow. That could be you know, the bank account or the treasury. That could be the voting system. That could be the Discord channel, the Notion docs. These are different types of tools that are used. Um, capital allocators, frameworks, that's us again, and there's a few other organizations that do that. And the leading DAOs themselves are really what people are using as an example to create their own DAOs, because there's no other real example right now, is there? So we spent the last year doing a ton of user research, and we tried to interview almost every single successful DAO or anybody wanting to build a DAO, and we created a pretty awesome persona of a DAO creator and who the next DAO, 10,000 DAOs will be created by. And this is really important. And it was said, you know, it was what we determine is called the intermediate builder. So this has changed drastically from the original 2018, 19, 20 DAO builders who were predominantly um, developers and senior developers. Um, now we're looking at people who are um, not necessarily super techie, but nor are they a total noob. You know, they are in between the web two to web three. We call it the web 2.5 space. And, you know, they're uh, experiments a little bit, but they're actually looking at building and they have really good formulated ideas. They're intelligent, vision led people. They're often entrepreneurs now. You know, it's a new way of working. Um, and so, really, the, the, anybody in this room could be that intermediate builder. And that's probably what's going to create the next 10,000 DAOs. They have big, complex visions for how things should work while they're trying to build it. And they're trying to get to that next stage, which many of you here might be as well. You're like, okay, I want to start an organization. What is this DAO? This sounds really interesting. I can leverage the people in the community to help build this product, whether that be through funds, whether that be through organizing, work together. And so they're learning, as I said, by these relevant DAOs. And they have this big idea upfront mentality. So they're like, okay, I have this great idea. And they spend, we think about six months to a year with this idea before they actually start implementing that. Many of you here might be in that stage. You're like, I have this amazing idea for a DAO. I myself have two or three amazing ideas for DAOs. Don't have a DAO yet. I'm in a couple, but haven't started my own. So maybe I will after this. <laughs> 
So, <clears throat> so we have our intermediate builder. That's probably where we think the majority of DAOs are gonna be created from. Now, where are they gonna be created from in here? Originally, most big DAOs, as you can see, DeFi, NFT collection, Web3 infrastructure DAOs, were sort of the most prominent and are the most prominent. But we're starting to see it leaking into other areas as well. We're seeing investment clubs, right? Maybe up to 100 people wanting to create an investment club themselves, gaming guilds, service DAOs, um, DSI, decentralized science. We're seeing a shift, a broader shift into DAO creation. And what that really means, as I mentioned, is that the next 10,000 DAOs are going to come from people like you. They're going to come from entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial like-minded individuals who probably would have started a company not too long ago. And now, because of the new tools that are being created and the increased technology, they're going to be able to do that without having tons of coding experience. That's sort of the goal. So this goes back to what Aragon's working on. As I mentioned, right now, we do have a... Uh, basically, you can go online and we have a DAO infrastructure tool where you can create a DAO, but it requires significant um, coding skills. It's highly customizable. Some of the biggest DAOs, Curve, Aave, are built on Aragon. Now, we want to start switching this a little bit. And what our hope is to soon offer, and not just us, the whole community to offer what we call the vending machine, which DAO House initially coined. And so when you start your DAO, you're going to be able to plug and play and choose what do I need? Do I need insurance? You know, do I need an insurance protocol? Do I need a DeFi protocol? Do I need a treasury? Do I need voting? What do I need for my DAO? Okay. And so you can see tons of examples. And this isn't everything of DAO operations and what are required. And our goal is to start to open this up and be the host of the party and basically help you get towards building your DAO, whether or not that's through Aragon is not our concern because we really do believe that this, if this becomes the new format for creating an enterprise, then we're all gonna be off to the moon, aren't we? So an example of, of one of these things, uh, of one of these initiatives that we're working on, there's a DAO right now called DAO Star One. And the whole point of this DAO is to create more of a universal framework for what DAOs are and what and, and from a coding perspective as well. And so there are key 60, 60 key organizations tackling this, including us, including Gnosis, including Moloch, including Zodiac, including all the big DAO players coming together to try and propel this forward. Because if we all can start using this framework rather than a typical LLC or another framework, we really are going to you know, move forward together. So a lot of DAO creators are reaching out to us right now because they don't know what to do, how to start a DAO. It's not that easy right now. You know, we've spent the last three months talking to individuals and they need advisory services, which we're going to start to offer. And if we're not offering that ourselves, what we are going to do is make it so that anybody who wants to start a DAO can find that information. We'll send you to Gnosis if you need to find out about Treasury. We'll have those connections. We'll create a platform that you can get that information because right now it's really disjointed. Nobody knows where to find the right information for now, right? Hence, many of you are here. <laughs> and so what is that creation journey? As I mentioned earlier, inspiration, active planning, this is where people are getting stuck. This is where a lot of time is being spent. But what we also did learn is you need to get into the testing phase, into the rethinking. You need to actually start putting that DAO together. And the most successful DAOs are the ones that are iterating as they go on. You're not going to build a perfect DAO before you build the DAO. It's not going to happen. So you might as well start and progress there and work with your community, work with the communities around to help build that. So that's what this is. It's the matchmaking. Wagmir, are we all going to make it? That's the big question here, right? So as I mentioned, our hope and our hope with Dow Star One and with all the other organizations is that we're going to be an open book. We're going to try and get people together, working together, kissing, so that we can build those next 10,000 DAOs. So if you're a DAO creator or community, please come to me after. I do have a uh, special link for our new product that's coming out, which you'll be able to build your DAO 
as the product builds with other people building their DAOs as well. And this is supposed to be, as I said, for the intermediate builder, okay? If you are a DAO service member or, or, or you are servicing DAOs, get in touch because we want to be able to offer your products, integrate, you know, uh, market you on our website so that people who are creating DAOs can successfully create their DAOs. So yeah, the rising tide lifts all boats or, you know, we're all going to make it. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you coming here. Thanks to our community members for hosting this. I mean, that's what DAOs are all about. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or Discord or come up to me after. I'm happy to answer any questions, give you that link so you can begin creating your DAO. Anthony, first of all, thank you. Uh, just uh, one question. So the DAOs that uh, you prepare, so usually uh, where they are deployed? I mean, on the existing uh, blockchains or, or there is some separate platform where usually uh, you deploy those DAOs? I, I think we, we missed the answer. Uh, there was no sound. So I repeat my question if uh, uh, possible. Can you please answer? Um, uh, which platform you are using for deploying the DAOs? Okay. 
Guys, hear me? Okay, good. Loud and clear. I feel like a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And lastly, uh, yeah. And lastly, when you know these roles are up for election, you can do a lot of work. I then also you meet very interesting people. Like the first day I met, I met some guy from Harvard who was like a hundred million dollar VC, and he had PhD from like like in from the nineteen nineties. And I genuinely thought this is a joke. Like I wish I could. Like I was so naive, you know, that I didn't take advantage of like all of this. Like probably a year back, and. like i would say that crypto really functions in dog years so you know what what thing will happen in like real real life in like 20 40 years crypto it can happen in a year but it's very important to understand that we need to find a position for ourselves where essentially we can we can do it for a long period of time because in the crypto space everyone wants to do everything fast so if you want to differentiate yourself as a contributor you have to be patient and you know find something you're good at and do that multiple times and then you can work with multiple dows and if you think your skill is appreciable and differentiable and you can build a community around it then you can go build it out uh i right now i work with a knowledge catalyst with andao so my job is basically you know uh to uh, like basically uh remove knowledge friction so someone wants to know about argon my job is basically uh to make sure that it's easiest for them to find it or have a contributor journey or have a good contributor journey so it sounds very good in theory but my real job is to actually reorganize discord and work on their notion <laughs> so right so i'll just show you just to end this with so basically this is our discord uh, all you have to do is just join like this is a platform you join this can you go in general yeah 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 you can just ask talk about anything you want uh, there's a whole journey yeah uh, can you go at the top uh, on the channel section <laughs> yeah yeah so you when you join in you can say yeah right you can like just click on start here and see like what's what's going on how to go about it you can join different channels learn more about it and if you see like sh uh, if you see shans right shans has so many communities that he's a part of now obviously we don't get paid from all communities <laughs> but the point is that you know some of them uh, communities can be very helpful and then they can actually even help you find real real world work right i had a web3 client he liked my legal work in web3 so he gave me web2 work as well so it's really about the community and then aragon has a notion page which essentially that's where you start to know more about uh, more about the dao it's actually pretty interesting that everything happens in a very transparent manner so uh also if you find if there is anything wrong with any dao you feel that oh i can do help to improve this you can essentially just make a proposal say okay uh, i don't like the discord the way it's structured i'm going to take $3000 and i'm going to study it speak to a lot of your contributors work on it for 6 to 8 weeks and help you execute my suggestion and if the community likes it and if the treasury can afford it there will be a vote on it and if that vote succeeds then it there is actually dissemination of funds obviously nobody is giving free money uh they make free money but they don't give free money <laughs> but uh, uh the way it happens is that the community if they like your kpis you get paid right so for example uh, like shans is just working here out of the passion for this community but if he thinks he's very good at it you know he can just go to aragon and say look next year i'm going to organize 100 meetups in 50 different countries this is the budget i need he'll upload it there and if the community likes it they will approve it and the way to approve it is through voting so basically this is how a general dao would function and that dao dao will have deliverables and you don't have a boss technically but each section have a few coordinators they they are up for re election every 3 4 months so 
this is really and this is the journey that you have to strive for to really understand this space uh, to join these communities because uh, it's just really hard to just sit on your computer and just research about it so if you actually have a role or actually have a bounty and a bounty can be as small as you know someone saying okay write an article on medium about aragon and i'll give you 500 dollars now the aim is not the money but when you submit that bounty write that bounty when you join the discord you will understand meet different people and those people themselves you know will help you out and people are generally very friendly in the crypto space because it's small and you know people really want to uh, like it's actually it's it's in people's interest to be nice in the crypto space right like i said every position is up for revote every four months there's a proposal that needs to be passed for you to get a budget so it's actually a lot about likability you know so if i am not a likable person and if i am not being nice to someone in a dao then my work doesn't get done so yeah so that's why in crypto space generally people are very nice very helpful and i'm the knowledge catalyst my uh, discord and twitter is like lion 917 so yeah you can join it i'll write it there as well but thank you if you have any questions you can you know ask and thanks a lot for being there yeah Are there any questions from online? Any questions? Please. Um, what chain are you on, basically? Yes. Yeah, so we offer. Uh, obviously, you can you can create your down on Ethereum, Polygon. Um, oh. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Just this one. Oh yeah, it it worked for a second. No, I think if you wrap it around it, it like needs to have a cone or something. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. testing. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. Um, for the question online and for people here, what um what chains can you deploy on? Um, right now you can deploy on Ethereum, Polygon. Uh, Arbitrum, Near, um, these are the main ones for now. Um, we are looking at expanding to other chains as well, um, including Solana and Avalanche. Um, but yeah, we've always been a very Ethereum heavy um, organization, but always looking to expand. Any other questions from online? And of course, uh, anyone have a question in the room? Yes. Sure, go for it. So the question was, who is the registered owner if they do, if somebody does create or deploy a DAO? And Lion will answer that one. Yeah. So technically, uh, when you make a dao you're just using like an app like aragon to do like managing governance and everything your community is managed on discord right so technically there is no government interference but where you actually need a dao or like to have like a relationship with a web2 entity is for example if you need a bank account so for example if you are a dao and you need to distribute t-shirts right to all your community members and they want to use sell merch you need a bank account you need a website whose name do you give so technically web3 can function in isolation but they still need a relationship with the real world so that's why we have something called legal wrappers so every any dao today has uh, like has like some sort of an incorporation system because if you are just a, on discord and if a government recognizes you technically you are just functioning as a general partnership so if you join a discord and government tries to sue you each member is personally liable because they recognize you as a partner right now to get around that uh, we need solid legal wrappers so that people can distance themselves from uh, the legal entity which is the dao 
uh, there are different options. So for example, you can incorporate in Marshall Islands, you can incorporate uh, in Wyoming. So there's a, there's a very nice, uh, like uh, uh, DAO friendly regime in America. Uh, you can incorporate in Sw Switzerland, you can incorporate in a lot of countries and a lot of them, you, you might find that these are scammy countries. So technically, you know, British Virgin Islands, Panama, a lot of these countries are very good for incorporating DAOs, but you're not doing anything illegal. But is this that the countries don't have friendly laws? Two DAOs. So where do you go and incorporate? And if you don't incorporate properly, and if there's a problem that happens, then technically you are personally liable for it. So there are uh, ways to go around it. So for example, if uh, I'll give you an example, right? I work with as a uh, person with a legal background. I work with various DAOs. So if you want to uh, do an ICO, uh, and if you want to actually build a business, and don't want to uh, you know have a lot of trouble with the government. So what the idea is that you incorporate a company in British Virgin Island then have a parent company in Singapore. So you can have access to uh, the bank account in British Virgin Island, you do your ICO. And then in wherever the world that you actually work, you can have a sub subsidiary owned by a Singapore company. So yes, it's very hard right now to uh, have legal entity for DAOs. And generally in the, the, uh, in the DAO space, people don't want to dox themselves. So what I mean is that people don't want to reveal their real identities. So on the, in the crypto space, my name is Lion917. And if they are not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I mean, frankly, I just don't want my friends to steal my clients. So uh, I don't tell them I work here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that's basically the entity part of it. What kind of Web2 platform is it? If it's like Facebook and you're just socializing, it does not make sense, make sense to move to a DAO. Very theoretical questions that we need to uh, think about, but okay. So technically you have to see the purpose, right? If technically there has to be a group of people that are actually managing the whole thing. So the expert is saying that it's where the I mean, technically, then the whole Facebook needs to have a that is being maintained in Web2 applications. Uh, I would buy because it's like previous games, games have their own virtual like. Go with uh, with the, the, the tokens. It's off again. Sorry. Okay. Is there? Oh, it was working for a second. No. For a mic, sir. <laughs> Can we use one? Yeah, yeah, you can try it. Sorry. While we're waiting. Hello. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you now. Okay. Like a real life business. So, right now, actually, our idea for FTI. So, we need to understand that we know that how the FTI is going to be. But when we are doing this, we still have a whole team of four people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that there is a Genesis team of still three, four people who are actually working on it full time. And then they give it to the DAO, right? So, technically, right now, I wouldn't say that DAOs is perfect for everything, but one thing that it works really for is that if you have a product that you're already building or is built and you want to create a community around it, right? 
so uh, and you have to have the best possible like ideas for improving that product dows is a very good solution for that so for example if you want to market your product right and you have a marketing budget but you just don't want to get one person and pay him salary to do everything you can just build a community around it and then have a bounty board so a bounty board is simple where essentially you upload tasks right so write a five line tweet about uh, argon that's a bounty and the best one gets a uh, 100 uh, like 100 usdc like the But so this is someone else separated from the product that you are actually working on yes yes a lot so of it's time. more like a, a survey system as if you you survey market asking people what they this this and that are you asking the application yeah Yes. Okay. I that is my problem. Okay, that's like I, I will be researching on the enterprise level of DAO, right? So, well, now one use case in Africa was that in African you know, governments don't have the money to. The bad roads and all that. So that they made a DAO. to she pull the money and those who pull them back right so in a way way the of commons right basically destroys the road and all that so so this is one good application of it now real life which i found yeah yeah yes i'll be with you in a second yeah yeah so uh, in 2017 yeah sir and a client from russia he came to me he wanted to build something dow act uh, the dow uh, like a charity organization where uh, the community act as a curators and people uh, submit their proposals and the curators actually curate the proposals so from different parts of the world people can sign up as a creator and if any proposal is submitted from that area the creator will actually physically go there and they will see the space and then they will vote on that they will verify that and for this service they will get some tokens which the proposal they uh, which will be funded from the pool So it's a kind of decentralized charity where you have a community of curators to curate the proposals and people who are giving charity to the DAO. But it did not work because it was, I think that was too early or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes. Question. Yes. For example, then it is better to listen to your examples. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, we've been actually working with Aragon since like mid 2017. We've been dealt probably 50 or something deals already with you, like in different areas. Uh, on the back end, uh, we have to work a lot with middleware and front end, as, as you probably well, well aware of. So in most cases, uh, the requests that we're receiving, we sort of bulk into three different areas. So one of them is is really about managing communities. uh the other is treasury management third is really like cost center dao so that you can pay something out so these three they they usually require different instruments right the first one is is usually going along the way of like off chain voting with snapshots and maybe gnosis safe and stuff so aragon with that you know with, with that infrastructure with costly you know voting system of course is, is not very sufficient uh um, the last thing of course requires a lot of like payment streaming you, you know uh, streaming payments whatever they call um and some other functionality and actually one of the uh this area is actually you know the cost center dao is, is actually um uh, exploding right now especially in in the part of the world where I'm coming from originally which is Russia Ukraine and with all the craziness that is happening there now as we all aware of so the banking system is is pretty much down for Ukraine because of the devastation for Russia because of the sanctions and uh, what people are doing now they are pretty much converting as much capital as they as they can to crypto then spinning out a dao as a wallet pretty much with uh you know with actually opening out daos in Delaware and Wyoming to have the legal sort of framework for their business and then really making some transactions even with their peers that are still located in their home countries 
but through the Delaware Wyoming companies with crypto so that they can have some framework, you know, legal and, 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 and all that. So this is happening pretty much now. Now, treasury management um, is uh, is exactly where, you know, the, where you guys are really, you know, really great because you, you do need to manage assets with on-chain voting and making sure that you do have the control over this amount of capital on the wallet that, you know, that is transparent versus the other things. So I'm, I'm, I'm having is uh, number one, what are your views on multi-chain? Because, you know, right now it's definitely a cumbersome thing when you, you know, if you do want to manage assets across different chains, literally you need to spin out so many DAOs and then so many voting tokens and, and all that. So you really literally don't have one interface. Uh, you know, any ideas about how to structure this? Are you working on it or not? Second is uh, is also this, you know, off-chain, on-chain voting, especially in the, you know, related to uh, the treasure management, if, if you have any takes there. Yeah, um, thanks for the question, great questions. Great questions, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're definitely looking at, at, and through the new product potentially offering this possibility for multi-chain um, movement of assets and voting and such, obviously it becomes quite complex, you know, um, especially as we're seeing bridges just yesterday, there was a $600 million hack on bridges. So it's complex and, and it's something we're looking at for sure um, because multi-chain is gonna be the future. I mean, we're pretty, I'm, I would say, I, I think I'm quite confident speaking to some more technical people, not myself, that those projects that are more multi-chain, the Cosmos, the polka dots, the, obviously the ETH 2.0, whenever that comes, um, is probably more futuristic and ahead than these monolithic chains Binance, for example, or Solana, for example. So these are some things that are, you know, some of my tech friends or our CTO has mentioned to me for sure. As for uh, the voting, was there a specific question um, that you had in regards to the voting, or what, or if we're continuing to work on voting in general? No, it's just that every time when you to look at beyond voting and how that's possible and how that can be implemented. I can tell you that we, uh, Polygon, and this was announced today, so I can't give you too much detail because I'm not sure, but Polygon is working on something that is uh, that allows for on-chain execution that isn't voting related. And we'll be reaching out to them about what that is, or if it's person to person voting, not tokenized voting. So is it one person, one vote? This is another question. Uh, I actually work for Aragon Labs as well, which is specializes in digital voting. So we do off-chain voting with on with potential for on-chain execution. Uh, on-chain voting is quite uh, gas intensive and difficult, and actually most people don't use this. Snapshot, for example, is is off-chain voting. Uh, they use a central server, for example. So there's a lot of this. Is, this brings up a lot of good questions about centralization and decentralization. A lot of the core of Web3 is built on is quite centralized, actually, which is quite ironic. Um, and as we saw from that hack yesterday, where I think uh, they were able to basically, I think there was four, uh, five signatures on the multi-sig required to make this transaction. They were all on the same um, chain. And so they were able to hack this. And that's because they only had nine nodes operating this entire bridge. I mean, right? So this is why when people are saying, oh, this is an Ethereum. Yeah. Is this an Ethereum killer? You know, Solana, for example, with Solana has 52 nodes in Ethereum. So we, we are continuing to work on voting. Right now, I can be completely transparent with you. We're actually, Aragon Labs and Aragon are merging right now. Aragon Labs specifically works digital voting, which Anne has been working with, let's say, uh, we have an election next week in a municipality in Spain um, for blockchain-based voting for municipality, which is very rare. So there's a lot of use cases that go far beyond the, the NFT, DeFi, okay, now Metaverse, and DAO conversation. You know, there are a lot of use cases in everyday life. We will, we're merging right now and we'll focus a little bit more on Web3 voting because it's a great way to build digital voting. And we'll hopefully go back so that one day, by the way, we all might be doing national elections, hopefully. It's not ready yet, but maybe in five years with, with blockchain-based voting. So I hope that answers a little bit of what you're saying. But we still see voting as an integral part. 
But I think we can expand beyond that. And we're looking at that. We can't have our enti entire reliance uh, on this industry into just simple tokenized voting. I don't think it's enough. And, and great input as well. Yes, uh, sorry, you yeah, had this hand up first. Right now, the status quo is basically the more tokens you have, the stronger your vote is. It's tokenized voting. Um, there are some projects working on one person, one vote. Um, if you know UBI, you know, Universal Basic Income Project, uh, that Santi Siri is working on, they're really looking for one person, one vote um, because they don't believe that the more money you have, the more power you should have. So we hope we'll have both of these types of interactions available in the future. Let me add that it's a, it's a more of a double-edged sword. Right. For example, if if it's one person, one vote. For example, uh, we went to a project two weeks ago, empty project, and uh, the the top post was like ultra galaxy bomb. Right. It was like one billion dollars, and the basic tire was ten thousand dollars. So so I had a I had a question. I said that what is the voting system? You're saying one person, one vote. I said, all right, okay, I'll just put $10,000, okay? I have a nefarious you know, intention. What I'm gonna do is that I bring 10 of my friends, you know, $100,000 we bring in, and we overwhelm the system where we are the majority. So if there's a project, which is basically one of my friends' projects, we funnel the money, we vote that, okay, go for this, but he said no, but we funnel the money from behind. So that's the bad side of one person, one vote. And uh, if, if enough power right that means 90 percent of the vote that is then there's no meaning of having it out because that person is basically owns the whole place a middle layer most of the DAOs, good DAOs i know for example steam it was one of a DAO, one of the early DAOs that died down because they didn't plan the governance system somebody came over took over and they start they had to fork it it's an ongoing discussion at the moment any more questions? Yeah, no, this is more of a, of a comment and, and you have no idea how happy I am that I, that, that, that I came because um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Lion mentioned something that uh, next Tuesday that I'm back in El Salvador, I'm gonna be able to answer one of my, my colleagues' question is, how can we incorporate a DAO? And it's done in Delaware. And so far, we, we, we in El Salvador, there is this, this, this thing on, of Bitcoin City, right? Yeah. And I am two phone calls away from finding out where the, part, where the land is and what, how much has it been sold for. So we, we're sort of, sort of thinking, hey, let's bring people and, and pull their money and start buying those stuff before uh, Bukele start building that city, right? And this is a perfect time for us. I'm looking for the, 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 the kind of investment. But me personally, I don't have any money. I have a house and I feel old, right? And bringing all these people, but how can I pull into buying a land, another one, another one? But then Lion mentioned that, that, that very part, the Delaware uh, incorporation Wyoming. from Wyoming, Wyoming. Uh, Wyoming. Um, incorporation of a DAO. Perfect. I, I love it. I love it. And, and I'm so happy that, that I'll be able to answer that. Okay. I'm just, let's yeah. end it. Yeah, if there's any, is there any final question or two? Yeah. You guys can stay back and we can still discuss. But yeah. yeah. So, otherwise, thank you guys for coming. There's pizza. Yeah. Please, I mean, eat to your hearts. <laughs> uh, all hang around. That's okay. Yeah, before that, I would love to take a selfie. If, yeah, a selfie. With yeah, I, sure. Yeah, let's take a selfie with the the the, the online community. We love you. Thanks, thanks for joining us. And we will also take a picture with the online community. I guess. Yeah. Yeah.
with the uh, online community. So we have like eight people who are there the whole time. If you could turn on your videos, if possible, uh, we want to take a picture with you online. Marco, and turn on the video. Yes. Hey, senior, how are you? <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's, let's take a picture, a picture of with, the, with the online community. Uh, yes, one, two, three. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks.